Hi, my name is Brian Thomas and I work with Teachers Curriculum Institute. Today I'd like to take an opportunity to be able to walk you through how to be able to conduct the Geography Alive Regions of People mapping labs inside your classroom. There are seven mapping labs as a part of the Geography Alive program. Each of the mapping labs covers a different region of the world, but they're all run exactly the same way. Today, I'll be focusing in on the Latin America mapping lab. So as a teacher, you want to go ahead and open your TCI subscription and go to that selection for the mapping lab that you're going to be doing. Here, you're going to be able to find all the materials that you need to print out and use inside your classroom for the mapping lab, such as your student handouts, the directions, uh, things called challenge cards that we'll get into here in just a little bit, and then also the placards, of course, uh, the visuals that you would use if you're not going to be projecting the presentation to your class. And as part of this uh, materials tab that you'll find when you do the lesson, uh, we also encourage you to make sure that you have transparency markers available uh, in several different colors or colored pencils, one of the two. So I'm going to go back here. And the other thing that you would do when you open up the, the Latin America mapping lab or whichever mapping lab it is, you'll see a purple button that will show you how to open up the TCI presentation. Now, I've already gone ahead and done that on a, an additional screen, and we're looking at that right here. I'm going to go ahead and go full screen so that we can get some of the other web menus out of the way. When conducting a mapping lab, uh, the students are cycled through a series of challenges. Uh, there are five of them in each of the mapping labs. When they're done, it is really remarkable how much the students will really know, not only in terms of the physical geography, but also the human geography of that given region. So every mapping lab begins the same way. In a preview, we're going to challenge the students to draw an outline of that particular region. Here we can see that a student is going to be challenged to draw an outline of Latin America. And they're going to try to do that from memory. These are called mental maps, and it's a great part of GIS, Geographic Information Systems, and it falls right into the National Geography Standards as well. So we're going to have them try to draw it from memory without looking at any map what Latin America would look like, but also to add a compass rose and several other features that would be a part of that too, such as the equator, other regions, bodies of water, areas, within that particular region that might have a particular type of climate, any type of vegetation, population, where they might be. And they're going to try to do this all from memory. Now, of course, for most of the students, they're going to struggle outside of doing North America. And frankly, they might even struggle with North America. Uh, but the idea here is to start with a baseline. Find out how much the students know about that given particular region. Then, as a teacher, you're going to begin cycling the students through over the next several days, and I do say that, several days in class, of a challenge that will lead them not only to learn a little bit about the physical and the human geography, but also why things are where they are uh, within that particular region. So you're going to pair students up. And in a series of challenges, the first one and the second one are very similar. In the first challenge, you're going to give the students an outline map, uh, physical, uh, a physical outline map of that particular region. And you're going to give them a handout that has 15 locations. You give them the latitude and longitude on those 15 locations. And their job is very simply to be able to locate and label those on their map. When their map is complete, hopefully it looks something like this. Now that's challenge one, learning about physical geography. Challenge two is very similar. Uh, the only difference is they're going to learn a little bit about human geography. So in a very similar way, we're going to give them an outline map, except this one is going to be a political map. And with that political map, we're also then going to give them 15 political features of which they need to locate and label onside their map. And again, to complete this, they'll work together with a partner.
And when they're done, hopefully, their answers look something like this. So the students have done challenges one and two. Now as a teacher, the very first time that you do a mapping lab, I would encourage you to definitely make sure that you do this together in class. Uh, but after you've done a mapping lab or two, uh, you've got that under your belt and the students are a little bit familiar about the process, this would be a great homework assignment to give to the students and push some of that outside of the class, very much like a flipped classroom. Push that outside, debrief it when they come into class and review those answers. Where the real magic begins is with challenges three, four, and five. In challenge three, again, working with a partner, what's gonna happen is that as a teacher, you're going to have the students go to different research stations around the room. Now, at each of the research stations, and you can see in this uh, faux classroom that we've set up here, we have three stations set up in a rectangular room. However you want to do this uh, in, inside your classroom is fine, but here's our suggestion. You're gonna be given inside the materials link in there, you're gonna be given five different thematic maps, a physical features map, a climate zone map, a vegetation zone, population density, and then economic activity. Uh, these would be listed under the placards in the materials link inside your teacher resources. Now, with each of these, if you set up three stations, you're gonna need three copies of the fiscal features, three copies of the climate zones. And at each research station, you would just put one copy. So what we would be looking at here, if we're students in the classroom and we're looking at a wall, we're looking at one research station that has a copy of each of these on the wall. Also, you'll want to make sure that you have the uh, colored transparency pens available at each of these research stations because students are gonna be coming around to them. To complete challenge three, the students are gonna be given a couple things. First is you'll copy off from the materials link a matrix that's uh, made specific for challenge three. There'll be 10 slots and each of those slots will have five thematic maps listed and then a space for a student to be able to write an answer. You're also going to find um, a, a, a master in our materials link there to be able to create a transparency. And you'll need to make sure that you have a transparency available for each pair of students. The students will also get a question and you'll cut these up from the materials. You'll see that the challenge three questions are printed out in a, in a matrix form. Print out a few of them, a couple copies of each cut them up and what's gonna happen is that each pair is gonna to come to you. They're gonna receive a question. It might be like this one right here in challenge three. What is the longest river in Latin America? Their job is going to be to look at one of the research stations and try to figure out which of those five thematic maps that's there at that research station is the most appropriate to be able to answer that question right there. Hopefully they look at the physical features map of Latin America. But I would encourage you to model the first question with all of the students, especially the first time that you do a mapping lab. So we're gonna have them focus in on one particular thematic map that will help them to answer this question right there. Then the students working in pairs will take their transparency, take their outline map, they will go to that station and they will lay it, they will lay that transparency right over top of that particular fiscal feature placard that you have hanging on the wall. They're gonna use that transparency pin to try to indicate where that river is and what the name of it is. When they collect that information, they're gonna be challenged to record it on their matrix answer sheet. So they're gonna find the appropriate location. This was question one, we can see that right up here they're going to then circle the thematic map that they use to be able to answer the question. And we can see that here, and then right underneath it, they will then write their answer. And that's how they do challenge three. When they're completed with a question, they will come up to you, they will check with you to make sure that they have the correct information, and you will give them a new question, and they'll continue on until they've completed at least most of the questions, if not all of them, depending on how many students and pairs finish before others. That's challenge three. So they get a good awareness of a lot of different features around that particular region just by doing challenge three. But we're gonna kick it up a notch a little bit with challenge four. In challenge four, they're gonna again work with a partner, but the idea with challenge four, it's very similar in terms of how it's run. They're gonna be given challenge questions 
But these challenge questions are a little bit different than just finding a single piece of information. Look at this question right here. How does the physical geography of South America's west coast affect its population density? That is not a question that students are going to be able to find just one map to be able to, to use information from and answer. The idea behind challenge four is to get the kids to ask the question, why are some of these features there? And begin to answer them using analysis and synthesis. So to complete this part of the, the, the mapping lab, again, the students will get a challenge question from you, such as this one. They will look around the room. They will try to figure out which of the thematic maps and tell them, make sure that they understand there's always going to be more than one in challenge four. They'll go to one of those stations. They'll lay their transparency map on there and they'll begin collecting some of that information. Then they'll repeat that very same process, say with at least another map. When they're done, what they're going to do is they're going to record that information just the same way they did in challenge three. The difference being is instead of just circling one thematic map, they're going to be at least circling two. And guess what? They may end up circling all five with some of these questions. And they're really deep thinking questions. You should see your class really work through mentally challenge four, begin to move away from just comprehension into application analysis and synthesis of really higher order thinking skills, putting this information together as to why are some of these features where they are located. I love watching students go through challenge four, but not as much as I love challenge five. And this is really kind of the penultimate of the mapping lab. When students come to challenge five, what you're going to do is you're going to give them three coordinates that are found somewhere in that particular region. So it might be 27 degrees north and 105 degrees west, or B, or location C. You're going to give them three locations and tell the students that their job in challenge five is you're going to give them a field photograph in just a few moments. And their job is going to be to figure out which of these three locations was the field photograph taken. So first, we want the students to locate on their map, on their transparency, where are these three locations? So they're going to find location A and B and C. Then you're going to direct them to go to those research stations that you still have up inside the classroom. And what you want them to do at that research station is to lay that transparency over each one of those thematic maps and use the transparency pen or use some notes and write down as much information as they possibly can about those three locations. And you're gonna give them a handout to be able to do that. So the handout looks like this. There are five rows each that have a column set aside for location A, B, and C to be able to collect that information. So fill in that matrix. And then what you're gonna do is after they have done that, and you've given them some time to be able to collect as much information as they possibly can, you're then going to pose to them this photograph and tell them they have to use the visual clues that are here in the picture and what they have written down about each of these three locations to figure out which one it is. But we don't want them guessing. Very much like the Common Core, we want them to cite evidence Here's how they're going to do that in challenge five of the mapping labs. They have to support their choice by completing a supporting evidence statement. So a good example of that would be something like this. Well, from the population density map, we learned this location is very close to a city that has over 8 million people. And in the field photograph, we can see about a dozen men around the boat, but no indication of other people. So they have to use supporting evidence to back up what they might believe is the correct location. Then of course you would reveal to them uh, which location it is. And in this case, it's location B. We begin with a mental map, trying to figure out what students know about a particular region. And sometimes it, it can be uh, unsettling as a teacher to know how little they know about it. After students have gone through this mapping lab, we should see a very different mental map at the end. And that's why we call this processing. At the end of every uh, mapping lab, you're going to have the students revisit their mental map. 
and they are going to revisit it and correct it by putting correct information on there from, from what they've done. So they're going to analyze their mental map. They're going to use a color to highlight some details that were fairly accurate and then also another one to uh, point out where they were incorrect and hopefully they will have a much better idea about that particular region. This is how you conduct a mapping lab with TCI. It's a great, great tool to teach GIS, Geographic Information Systems. You can learn more about TCI, Geography Alive, and a number of other programs, including our upcoming K5 Bring Science Alive program at teachtci.com. Thank you.